Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing another mini PC. This one is the Ace Magician AMR5, which I suppose stands for Ace Magician Ryzen 5, because this is equipped with a Ryzen 5 5600U processor. So that's 6 cores and 12 threads with AMD Radeon Vega 7 graphics. And the package is just so damn small, guys. Also, I want to show you the unboxing experience of this mini PC. I really enjoyed it, actually. Let's go over its specs real quick while we're at it. So, as I told you, it has a Ryzen 5 5600U processor, 6 cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2666 megahertz, which is a little bit of a bummer, actually. And I asked if they could actually include 3200 megahertz RAM, and they said no. I guess this mini PC is actually stuck with 2666 megahertz RAM out out of the box but you can actually upgrade it and we'll get into that in just a little bit this version also came with a 256 gigabyte ssd m.2 and you can install another one and you know what that rgb is just absolutely magnificent isn't it <laughs> i mean it looks quite nice you also have plenty of ports you got two usb type a ports one usb c one audio jack another two um, usb type a's right there which I am using for a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard, uh, a display port, HDMI, LAN, and of course the power supply. Now, one of the most interesting things about this mini PC is this thing right here, guys. The power button actually moves. And you can change it between silent, auto, and performance mode, and it has a very nice click to it. And the power usage of this APU will vary between the modes. So as you can see here, it's set to silent mode at 100% CPU usage. It is consuming 10 watts of power around that. And if you switch it to auto mode, it actually consumes 18 watts of power. Uh, and the temperatures rise up to around like 83, 84 degrees Celsius. It's also really warm in my room, by the way. It's around 30, 31 degrees Celsius at the moment. So if your room is not like an oven, it will actually be a little bit cooler, okay? And silenter, si si quieter, yes. <laughs> and then in performance mode, it runs at 25 watts of power and that temperature goes up to 90 plus degrees Celsius, which is a little bit too much, but within AMD spec. They actually say that these APUs can go up to 105 degrees Celsius just fine. And this, these are actually normal operating temperatures for these chips. It actually gets pretty loud if you use it in performance performance mode so I would actually utilize it usually like on silent if I'm just browsing the web and then performance mode for playing games and stuff like that we're actually going to utilize that and uh, remember when I told you about the upgradability this is actually quite nice it's magnetic guys the side panel just comes off like that it's pretty interesting. And then you get access to the RAM sticks right there. It's in dual channel, of course. Uh, the SSD, again, 256 gig SSD there. And another SSD that you can install right there. So very easy access to the upgradable components. And that's enough intro. Let's play some games on the AMR5 mini PC now, shall we? All right, it's desktop time and let's go through the specs here. So in CPU-Z, you can check out all of the CPU specs of course in the memory tab there is the 16 gigabytes of ddr4 dual channel 1330 megahertz but it's always double that so it's 2666 megahertz and over in tech power ups gpu z as well as the graphics tab in cpu z you can check out all of the gpu specs it also has 512 megabytes of ddr4 allocated to vram only but it will utilize more ram as vram if it needs to because it's an igpu let's start with a very easy to run game CSGO at 1080p low settings for a competitive experience here and uh, it is actually running pretty well as you can see although it stutters a little bit but it could be because of the deathmatch mode here which usually stutters a bit in a lot of PCs uh, the competitive mode should be a little bit better I'm stuttering a little bit as well <laughs> but yeah it's quite nice isn't it and you know what they actually call this a mini gaming PC but that's all because it does a pretty good job in these esports titles you know csgo valorant dota 2 league of legends it won't have a problem with any of those games and it's actually 
performing pretty well here. 100 plus FPS average. Uh, it's not really meant for AAA gaming and the company itself said that it was for lighter games. So yeah, I'm still gonna test like Cyberpunk and Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's probably not gonna do a very good job in those. You can also see that the GPU utilization is not really maxed out and the power usage on the CPU is at 20 watts of power. That's because the CPU itself is using 20 watts and the rest of the power is being allocated to the GPU. And as usual, it's doing a pretty good job at balancing that power usage. The GPU is not really being maxed out, which is actually a great thing in CSGO because whenever it's at 99% usage, it gets more input lag. So yeah, I can't really feel a lot of input lag either in this system here in CSGO. So I guess that's it for CSGO. I'm not doing very well here today, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it runs pretty well on a system like this. Speaking of intensive titles, let's play some Cyberbug now. 720p resolution, lowest settings and ultra quality FSR. Okay, that is not too bad. This is still FSR 1.0, by the way, because FSR 2.0 is not in the game yet, aside from the mod, you know. But whenever that update releases with FSR 2.0, uh, you should be getting around FPS like these and the graphics should look a lot better as well. So this, well, unfortunately, it drops a lot. Oh my god, are you serious? He'll kill us. No, I'll kill you, Bob. Goodbye. That was a nice... Uh, death by Bob, you know, that, that was fast and easy. Come on, go, go away. Go away, buddy. Let's go. I'm doing a benchmark here. This is a super intensive area for the CPU to render and the GPU as well, of course, but it's a, more of a CPU intensive area than GPU intensive and it does drop into the mid-20s. The problem isn't really that it drops into the mid-20s and it's in the 30s most of the time. The real problem is that frame time graph is absolutely terrible. It is stuttering a lot, guys. And 30 FPS, unfortunately, do not feel like 30 FPS in this one. It's right around 30, but I, it's such a stuttery mess. It's really inconsistent, and I just can't really have fun like this, honestly, guys. It's If it was 25 FPS locked and smooth, it would be fine, but this is way too much stuttering here. It's probably because of the RAM being 2666 megahertz that doesn't help the APU of course faster RAM is always way better especially in APUs now we're testing Dota 2 at 1080p using medium settings and 100% resolution scale DirectX 11 because Vulcan stutters a little bit and uh, let's just wait for a team fight I guess whenever not much is happening you can actually get 60 plus FPS which is great to see and what is happening here a little bit of a team fight with some effects. Doesn't drop all that much, it seems like. That's pretty good, actually. You know, in, in Dota 2, 60 plus is not really mandatory. It's dropping into the 40s right now, but I think it's still pretty playable, even with 30 FPS. So it's not a problem if it's getting drops into the 40s. It's actually pretty good still. And another interesting thing is that most people are actually playing games like CSGO and Dota 2. CSGO and Dota 2 are actually the top 1 and 2 most played games on Steam. So if you're just a casual player, something like this, the Ryzen 5 5600U, would actually do a decent job. Just make sure to pair it with 3200MHz RAM. That's actually very important. Doesn't feel like the smoothest thing in the world, honestly, especially when it drops, but still okay. As long as you can move the mouse around freely and without stuttering, it's fine, guys. You can actually play it even competitively if you want to. I have a friend that plays this game competitively with less FPS than these. And he has played it for like 7,000 hours already. <laughs> it, it, it runs just fine, okay? I'm curious to see it on high as well. So, so let's do basic settings here. High, 100% resolution scale. You don't need to restart the game. It looks way better. The shadows make it look fantastic. And I wouldn't really play on higher settings than these, honestly but it is dropping already from 60 FPS. I think in team fights it could drop into the 30s and even 20s possibly with very, very demanding e effects. All right, catch Necro off guard there. Good stuff, dropping into the 30s, as I told you. Closer to 30 FPS there, 33. That's actually not bad. Look at that, oh boy, 29, 28. 
So as I was saying previously, it actually can drop from 30 FPS in very intensive scenarios. It's not really the end of the world, but I, I think I would choose medium settings anyways. It's 1080p resolution still, so it's sharp and detailed. Really nice, look at that. Damn. Most of the time it's fine though. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, the poor Radiant. <laughs> now we're playing Stutter Knight at 1080p using the lowest settings, 100% 3D resolution and performance mode. And you probably all know why I call it Stutter Knight. This game stutters a heck of a lot. It's probably going to be the most stuttery one out of every game that we test today. Actually, maybe Cyberbug was more stuttery. Um, but yeah, I already played the game here and I dropped here and died almost instantly <laughs> but it, it gave it time to load some of the things so that's why right now it's a little bit more stable although still pretty crappy in frame time consistency and all right we just started counting our fps i don't understand what are these things with people's names and stuff hi buddy what, what are you even doing there come on oh boy we almost died again i'm really confused oh there's one of them okay wait come on all right one down this is actually super playable right now. The second time of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the second time around, it's it's pretty damn good. As you can see, it loaded everything already. 1% lows are still crappy, but at least they don't really feel that bad. And uh, the game is quite playable here. Whoa, whoa, what? What kind of gun is this? I wasn't expecting that. What the hell? How did I kill this guy? Whoa, what? The okay, so you are the one shooting those things weird things come on come on get over here get over here come on come on all right we got this oh boy so close though i'm almost dead <laughs> uh. oh there's another one no i don't want to die i don't ah, damn it it was going so well why did everybody decide to drop here ah. oh this can be good actually because now we can see other areas of the map exactly that's perfect so over here it gets a little bit more fps than where we were 100 fps sometimes i will probably stop counting them though because the one percent lows are going to be wrecked every time i uh, switch players basically this is nice actually the guy is just flying around or spider manning around we could say webbing yes exactly and uh basically it will stay above 60 fps all of the time i guess doesn't really change that much. It's almost more into the 100s than the 60s. So that's quite nice coming from an APU like this. And this is native 1080p resolution as well. So definitely very playable. I could enjoy the game all day long like this. And now it's GTA 5 at 1080p resolution using the DirectX 11 API and normal to high settings. It's a mix of medium to high basically. Actually normal is low in this game. As you can see here it says that we have 8 gigabytes of VRAM. That's because it can actually utilize up to 8 gigabytes of RAM as VRAM. Now GTA 5 is not an esports title of course. It's a AAA game from a few years ago. 2015 it released in 2015 on pc and earlier on consoles um but yeah th that's to show you that you can actually play some triple a games as long as they're old or well optimized they will run fine on specs like these as you can see it's buttery smooth by the way zero stuttering or zero frame time spikes as i was saying that we got just a little tiny one that was not noticeable whatsoever i'm driving really badly today <laughs> and uh you know what although this is not 60 fps plus all of the time you don't really need that in gta 5 in my opinion at least this is a perfectly playable experience and as long as you don't play with high grass quality i don't even care guys today i'm just running over people I, they're just, just, i've had enough here guys okay these people just don't learn every single day i do this and they don't learn. I'm a very good driver, guys. In real life, I actually am not a bad driver, okay? <laughs> this is just in GTA 5, basically. All right, so most intensive areas are bushy areas. And it's dropping into the, like, mid-30s, lower 30s at times, which is not bad still. That's Jacqueline there. Hi, Jacqueline. Should we start liking Jacqueline, guys? Are we gonna give her a second chance? She, she cheated on Jack, you know. It, it's dropping from 30 FPS, by the way. 
Uh, it's probably because we saw Jacqueline there, actually. If we didn't see Jacqueline, it wouldn't really drop from 30 FPS, you know? So th that's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Anyways, the visual fidelity is actually quite good still. You don't really have grass on normal grass settings, but it's not really an issue. It doesn't really affect gameplay, and it's still pretty immersive and a very good experience, indeed. Now we got Forza Horizon 5 at 720p using the low settings preset, not the lowest. And it's actually kind of impressive, you know, it's at 60 something FPS. Out here it's not really that intensive, we're gonna go to a super demanding area right now. Uh, but so far... It seems like it's doing a really good job here. This is a AAA title from last year. It's a super well-optimized one. That's why it's running pretty well. And honestly, low settings kind of look decent at 720p here with this uh, little system. It's not too bad, you know? Oh, yeah, that was so close. I almost smashed into the wall there, but okay, we're fine. We're fine. That is a little bit of a problem, though. FPS-wise, it's good, and we could actually extract a little bit more visual fidelity coming from this game on medium settings, but if you play on medium settings, the VRAM usage would go up by a lot, and we'd actually be stuttering a bit, so uh, I don't really recommend you to do that. It's actually already stuttering just a little bit here and there uh, at the low settings as you can see by the frame time spikes sometimes but as you know already APUs use system RAM as VRAM and we're already using 14 gigabytes of it so there's not much left in the tank in that regard you know so avoid medium settings low still looks uh, decent ish uh, and this provides a playable experience although not the best one because of the stuttering issues but yeah it's handling it pretty well here in the city as well i thought it would drop more than it actually did so that's okay oh we, we lost our spoiler as well jesus i'm just wrecking the cars every time in every single game that has cars i I, I don't know what happens. I just suck at driving. <laughs> but anyways, in worst case scenario, it only dropped into like 40 FPS or so, getting out of that tunnel, which is super intensive. So it is playable. Next up is Red Dead Redemption 2, another super intensive title at 720p resolution, high textures and everything else is set to the minimum, including TAA, which hopefully will be set to the minimum when I apply the settings. Uh, TAA actually really likes to uh, set itself back to high for some reason. And okay, TAA is definitely disabled and we're getting pretty high FPS for what it is, you know? It's integrated graphics, Red Dead Redemption 2, super intensive title, yet it's smooth. It's way better than Cyberbug for sure. Like, I could play and enjoy the game like this, absolutely fine. Roach, get over here. All right, now let's find Bob, kill that bastard, cause mayhem, and get the heck out of this city. It's blinking a little bit sometimes. Uh, there he is! There he is! Playing copyrighted music. Did uh, Roach actually disappear for a second there? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not counting the FPS. I'm so sorry about that. But it's extremely stable. Above 30 FPS. This is quite nice. Honestly, I thought it would be a little bit worse. I don't know why. It's been a long time since I have tested uh, Vega integrated graphics, I guess. But yeah, I, I guess this combo, the 6 cores, 12 threads with the Vega 7 is doing an amazing job. This... It's also consuming like 25 or 28 watts of power maximum, maybe 30 maximum, uh, combining the GPU and the CPU. So that's amazing for what it is, you know? Th this is the only PC in my room currently that I can have on and it doesn't heat up the, the room more than it is outside because outside it's like 34 degrees and inside it's basically the same thing. But if I was testing like the 3080 Ti, it would get like 38 degrees Celsius here inside of the room, which is crazy and insane. And I actually got to wet my shirt to stay alive, basically. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay, there is, there is a huge alligator. Roach, why did you do this to me? I hit my head. There's blood in the ground and stuff. I might need to use this. I'm not sure. Keep away from me. I don't like to kill animals, but I will do it if you're a threat to me. There's another one here. Actually, there are tons of alligators around here. And this is more of a GPU demanding area in this game, by the way. Yet it's getting around the same FPS with less CPU power. Look at that. So in the city, it uses 25 watts of CPU power because it's way more CPU intensive there. 
and out in the woods it gets more GPU intensive, so it allocates more power to the GPU and less to the CPU, and it ends up getting around the same FPS. That's that's really nice, guys. <laughs> I really love this. The, the fact that you can play Red Dead Redemption 2, and it doesn't look like crap because it, we're using high textures, you know, on a mini PC like this is amazing. AMD is just great with APUs and stuff. Can't wait to test like the 680M integrated graphics in the Ryzen 6000 CPUs. Uh, by the way, if any mini PC company is watching this, I, I'd like that. And now it's Valorant, another really easy to run title. 1080p using high settings here, but the rest is set to low. Getting around the same FPS as like CSGO, so far at least. Uh, but it is not stuttering one bit like CSGO did. So I, I think this let's is a better experience, idiot. guys. Let's start counting our FPS now that it started. And uh, Hi, let's go. This is gonna be fun. Headshot. First down. That was just an AFK, guys. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Thanks. All right. Now the first, the actual first down. And another one there. Not from behind. The other one just spawned behind me. You know, I would have gotten that kill. Or not. Because the guy actually headshotted me. But still, that's that's unfair. And that's unfair as well. That's a sandwich. No, no, no. Why are they always everywhere? Ah, this is annoying. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We can do this. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. Another one there. Can you stop coming from there, please? That's not a guy. It's just a bicycle. Yeah, who likes bicycles? Oh, la, 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 la. Almost getting an ace, guys. Almost getting an ace. That's the ace. That's the ace. The guy was just AFKing there. It wasn't him. <laughs> I don't know, but that was actually pretty cool. I mean, most of you will probably have 60 hertz monitors anyways, so... The fact that we're always getting 60 plus all of the time is fantastic here. And 69% lows. It's perfect, basically. Can we get another ace? Please, another one. Yes, sir. We can do it. Stop. Oh, boy. Come on. <laughs> Five kills remaining. Three, four. One more. Come on. Get over here, people. Don't be scared of me. Oh, it actually still worked for the pentakill. That's One nice. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. That was awesome, guys. This is perfect, okay, actually, for Valorant. <laughs> and now it's Apex Legends at 720p. Lowest settings. Okay. Waterfall area. Super, super GPU intensive. This area right here. Hey, it's not too bad, actually. It's getting 40s. Even here, like, this is not a normal place to be at in this game because it just drops way too much. So the fact that we got 40 FPS makes me think that it could be a 60 FPS experience, at least on average, you know? That's good, actually. I was expecting lower FPS here in Apex Legends, actually, especially after seeing less than 30 FPS up there. But we got to see it in, like, ultimate scenarios and stuff like that because that's super intensive, usually. Oh, boy. Um, maybe we should not be doing this because... What? The guy just didn't care about us. Uh, now they know. <laughs> I'm just going to go now. I really don't want to die right away. Maybe if we go in this direction, we can get another one of them. No, but uh, never mind. Okay. I <laughs> actually wasn't even going to include Apex Legends in this video, but I'm so glad I did. This is super playable. It's really enjoyable for a casual player, I think. But the reason I wasn't going to include it is because this video is going to come out really late today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's, you're probably going to watch this Monday, some of you. <laughs> and it's not Sunday video. And Well, it still is a Sunday video, right? Oh, I hit him. Okay. All right. Ultimate ready. Let's go. 50s. Smoke effects. Oh, my. 40s. Explosions. Let's go. Come on. 30s. Well, it's it's not terrible. It could be way worse, but it could be a heck of a lot better. But I guess with integrated graphics, you can't really ask for much. This is pretty damn decent. It actually reminds me of the performance that we got with the HD 7970M. Uh, that's a laptop GPU. It's the same as the HD 7870 on the desktop. And that's a 10-year-old GPU or actually 11-year-old GPU now, I think. But it was also a top-of-the-line laptop GPU, so... Uh, these days we can actually get 
top of the line 2011 or 2012 laptop performance for a much more reasonable price, right? And only consuming around 30 watts of power in total for a GPU and CPU. That's really good. Finally, the last game is Call of Duty Warzone at the 720p resolution using lowest settings and 102 FOV. Oh wow, this is way different than the last time that I played it. Okay, interesting. Dropping into the 30s and 40s at times. We gotta get something. We gotta get a decent weapon, please. Drop me something here. Start counting the FPS. Alright. I'm not sure if this is good. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Alright, we got him. We're good, guys, we're good. Just die, buddy. Thank you. There's a guy here. We're gonna die. <laughs> Uh, so while dropping, it actually drops into the 20s, but down there it's not completely terrible. Again, this is not a game that you should play with a system like this. The fact that it's actually working above 30 FPS is fantastic because this is not what this little APU was designed for whatsoever. But I guess if you are really persistent and you want to get good at the game at 30 FPS, you you could! I've played many games at 30 FPS back in the days and uh, I, I was good at it. I, I was good at like Battlefield 3 with 30 FPS, 35 locked I think that was how I played that game. It's definitely possible for you to play like this, you're just gonna be at a big disadvantage compared to someone with like 144 FPS. But the question is, is it enjoyable? Oh my gosh! Come on, come on! Nice! Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's still pretty good. I, I can have fun like this still. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just like she said, I gotta say, this little thing is pretty impressive, guys. <laughs> I mean, it can't really play all of the games very well, obviously. It's not supposed to, but it runs like esports titles absolutely fine. All the AAA stuff just fine as well, and it even surprised me in like Warzone, Apex Legends, and Red Dead Redemption 2. So, yeah, although you have to play those games on low settings to have a semi-competitive experience, or playable one actually, uh, in 720p resolution, well, it's, it's good that it actually can run those games. So I'm a little bit impressed here with the Ryzen 5 5600U, especially because it is a 15 watt or a 10 to 25 watt actually um, APU. If you're in the market for a mini PC, I guess this one is pretty all right. You know, I, I really like the form factor and it's so cute, right? <laughs> but the thing is, the Ryzen 6000 stuff, the APUs from the 6000 series, well, they're coming. You know, some of them are already here in the market. You can grab a laptop with it already, I think. And they are much better than this. For example, the GPU, the Vega 7 integrated graphics here is comparable in performance to like... A GT 1030, it's, it's a little bit better than a 1030 actually, GDDR5 version. And I think the 680M is actually comparable to a GTX 1050 Ti, which is a heck of a lot better, of course, like double the performance. So yeah, if you can grab one of those. Oh, also you could, for example, connect this to a TV and uh, it would be a, a pretty decent streaming PC, for example, for GeForce Now and browsing the web and watching some movies on Netflix and stuff. Uh, I mean, every uh, TV is a smart TV now, so you don't really need that, but <laughs> yeah, it does a good job at that, and it's pretty silent in silent mode. It's not completely silent, but it's pretty quiet. It's also so satisfying just to remove the, the side panel of this thing and do this. <laughs> All right, let's end the video. Thank you very much for watching this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Tell me down in the comments below if you would buy something like this. I know it's not for everyone. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye.